This is The Chris Abraham Show. Hey, this is Chris Abraham, The Chris Abraham Show, Season 6, Episode 5, and I'm wearing my 24 kilo backpack again. Huzzah, huzzah, huzzah. It means that I'm feeling strong and virile and studly and all those things. But to look at me, you wouldn't tell. Um, I'm back down to losing weight as opposed to uh, maintaining or plateauing. I'm popping on here on the way to Starbucks. This might be a two-parter. I might do the first half as I walk to Starbucks and then the second half as I walk to Idito's. Um, I still mean to do an article, an episode about uh, personal space and putting down boundaries. But let me give you a, 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 a sneak preview, Linda. Um, my Because I'm a lifelong codependent of alcoholism, and uh, because I found growing up in Hawaii very threatening and sometimes dangerous, I always retreat and uh, I retreat and I, uh, well... Long and short of it is I, uh, I tend to hold my fire. I tend to try to exit the situation and then I make, uh, and so that's sort of like the, the, um, that's my solution, my solution, because otherwise if I, I mean, when I attack, I attack big and I'm 300 pounds and I'm six foot three, real six foot three, not dating up six foot three. And, uh, any kind of putting up boundaries in a in aggressive way is always resulting in people flinching, freaking out, and crying. So, what I do is I try to, uh, if someone puts me in a place where I need to put up boundaries, I generally disconnect from them. I generally ghost them. I generally retreat to my own surroundings. Um, it's not active armor; it's passive armor. It's uh, it's it's probably kind of a passive aggressive strategy learned from my growing up in Hawaii where Japanese uh culture reigns supreme and one is always trying to save face and save the face of the other person so uh by retreating and then conspiring against them uh is sort of sort of the unfortunate thing I probably need to go to lots of therapy for anyway back to what I am talking about is his name do dare do Duterte, the former president of the Philippines. Um, there's a new New Yorker interview today by is it Res Resmic, the uh, uh, the editor, the main editor, the managing editor, the head tamale of the New Yorker, and he's interviewing what a woman who calls herself a a trauma journalist, and she works for a platform called Rappler. Is it called Rappler? Anyway, she's going on and on and on about Duarte, or du, 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 Duarte, du, Duarte, uh, and uh, who is pretty much called uh, the Donald Trump spirit animal, right? So there's this constant accusation that in 2016, well, the assumption is in this interview is that uh, democracy is in danger, and I guess because of Trump, the entire world is now embracing. Uh, nationalist, so, uh, nationalist populism, and ergo, because uh, D Duderte literally ran on the promise of killing drug dealers and criminals and theoretically drug addicts, and then actually did those things. I wonder if this woman who reports on what a terrible, bloodthirsty man Duderte is, I wonder if she realized that she was actually politicking for him. When you do realize that conservatives drink liberal tears, right? So if Trump goes out and says, I promise that I'm going to crush the narco terrorism in this country and I'm going to put criminals in a jail and I'm going to end the rampant street crime and I'm going to crush lawlessness and looting and rioting and I have the biggest hands, then when people report on him saying he'll actually do it, he'll actually send people to death row, and he'll he'll throw all these 
inner city looters and rioters in a jail and they'll be away from their family and they'll never be free again and he'll uh um i don't know do all these other things then i feel like instead of necessarily sending people away from voting for someone like duderte duderte trump or or uh even gaza even you know in gaza they voted in democratically uh the um the uh hamas they voted in hamas democratic elections so i wonder if in a world where all we see on television are flooding of uh of migrants uh even cities like new york san francisco chicago and la having huge amounts of perceived homelessness encampments and people strung out on drugs in the public not even in their little sexy opium dens in the middle of the streets shameless and everywhere they go they smell the the skunk of pot and they're seeing people in blue and purple hair talk about their 43 different uh genders and all these other things i mean everything bad that you're ever going to say about trump and even everything bad that you're ever going to say about jfk jr is going to reinforce the fact that if they vote for trump he is not just a new york city actor he's not just a pompous bag of air um trump is according to them the biggest threat to social justice and in a country that feels like social justice is the source of all evil and is the you know the vocal cords of demons and all these other things i feel like that's a pretty good sale anyway i'll talk to you soon hey this is part two um <clears throat> i uh had my breakfast and had have a very large eight shots of espresso next to me that i take black so when i arrived it wasn't there someone had taken it <clears throat> and they made me a new one because i ordered it all the way at my apartment by the time i got here someone had taken it and i jokingly told the uh guy at the desk the barista at the table i said well he or she's in for a ride so i'm listening to this woman i think her name's pat or pam on this uh interview i listened to a few more minutes of it and the way she talks about herself is so film noir gumshoey how do i get through it i get through it with caffeine nicotine and alcohol uh love her anyway my point is is that the best way here's a dating here's a, a dating thing right in a in an environment of college or high school uh or in dating apps apparently the top one percent of men in dating apps have access to 80 percent of the women on dating apps so and it's not because necessarily that you say uh how good a man is or how lovely a man is or how kind a man is or how selfless a man is necessarily uh we all know the trope and this is not just a woman and man thing i mean i i'm really i love the bad girls like every single woman i dated except the women i rejected were bad girls and the women who were bad girls uh you know the i don't want to be in the club that'll have me kind of thing um and so this isn't just gendered but uh everybody will fight over the asshole bad boy in school any woman who feels like she's competitive to be able to attract a man like that um you know based on how beautiful she is how whatever uh, adoring she is how affable she is whether she puts out or whether she puts out too much or not enough like all these things don't attract uh until maybe later like nice guys do well during second marriages um but nice guys do terribly poorly uh on first marriages so everybody's gonna if you can if you can convey nobody's gonna vote for ramaswamy vivek Ramas, ramaswamy because he's he has no edge at all jesus um hillary had the wrong kind of edge she had the uh she had the disinvited list kind of vibe um obama was sexy i think there's kind of an edge to sexy right there's kind of an edge to sexy i mean he was handsome and he seemed like he was committed to his uh, to the to the person he's married to and to his kids and all this stuff but you know he has passions you know he was an activist he was a community organizer 
He was probably part of the Weather Underground. Probably has uh, has uh, probably has um, time spent at Langley. Like who knew, right? Dead sexy. So there's that. But you have to have kind of an edge about you, like whatever the opposite of Pence is, or whatever the opposite. Oh my God, Ron DeSantis is. Listen, boys. You can go to Harvard, you can go to Yale, you can go to Princeton. A woman might want to marry you if you're all those things because you're going someplace. But just because you were, you know, a JAG off or a JAG officer in the Navy, having gone, I think, Rhodes Scholarships and Harvard, Yale, and maybe World Economic Forum, who knows, Rhodes Scholarship. In spite of all those things, he doesn't have what plants, what is the term for, for Brondo? Uh, Brondo, Brondo has what place, what plants want, what play, what, anyway. Um, so, I mean, Joe Biden tries, Joe Biden doesn't really have it. He has the dangerous, he has the, um, I will smother you with a pillow in bed while you're asleep vibe. And, um, Trump really doesn't have a dangerous vibe at all. I mean, you know, for a fact, he wouldn't engage in fisticuffs. The only kind of fighting he does is by hi- hiring lawyers and uh, agents. But um, the more that the left, and this might be intentional, this might be intentional, all this might be intentional. The left goes ahead and uh, paints him as the second coming of of Pol Pot, of Adolf Hitler, Adolf Hitler, of, oh, what's the uh, former head of um, Romania? Ceausescu, right? He is the, he is the Stalin, uh, Lenin, Etc. So the more he gets painted as being dangerous and killing bad guys and and disappearing people and putting up and, you know, being a badass and sending out JSOC and having the Navy SEALs kill people. And that's another thing that that uh, Obama and Bush and uh, I'm told by someone who spent a lot of time with George W. Bush that he is charming and smart and kind and friendly and lovely and flirty and all these other things in person. So the um, the yokel Joe Biden slash uh, Ronald Reagan. I'm just a simple man and I don't know much. I'm from Texas, center. I, I what I do is I clear undergrowth and I clear brush. That kind of thing is completely performative. So so everything that anybody says that suggests that Trump is sexier, more dangerous, more powerful, more uh, decider than he really is. Because all he is is like a rich guy from Manhattan who's from Queens or the Bronx who had money in his pocket. He never, unless you get me more information, he never kneecapped anybody. He was never an enforcer. He was never actually um, directly related to any type of mafia. He didn't do any street crime. He doesn't have a childhood. He's probably never taken a life by hand with blood where he can see the spirit leave the eyes. Um, So anything that the mainstream media can do to convey him as a dangerous socialite, uh, dangerous socialite, that's exactly what he is, as a dangerous sociopath, psychopath, um, person who's going to uh, crush people of color, he's going to erase blackness. Anybody who can convince that maybe... Um, um, Trump is going to do pogrom or do, um, Gaza or do ethnic cleansing in America of anybody who Western traditional rule of law culture believes is unlawful behavior and will ethnically cleanse them into private prisons or into the military or into a standoff with police who will probably kill them because it's never the crime, it's the escalation. That's going to encourage people. This is the time right now where, um, you know, a, a Le Pen is probably going to be the next person elected in, um, in, uh, into France, and, and, and Germany's on the precipice. Liberal, liberal, lefty Germany, who says even American Democrats are to the right, you know, like neolibs and neocons. Um, even they are going to get, um, a rightist, uh, a rightist and, and a rightist government that makes Angela Merkel seem center. 
right now in Great Britain, there is a conservative government. There are Tories in office. In spite of the fact that they've been doing an amazing job of tar and feathering them. So, and then you've got Hungary, and then you've got Poland, and then um, I guarantee you, after um, Voldemort Zelensky, Volodymyr Zelensky, is finally taken out, um, he's going to be replaced by someone who gets along with Poland and Hungary. He's going to have to be replaced by someone who is able and willing to be in a room with with Vladimir Putin. Um, He might even be a person that draws Ukraine into BRICS instead of into NATO. Um, Because all the words about BRICS from everybody that I know who are in the know, they're not threatened by it at all. They find it to be a, a club, a band of losers, nothing to be afraid of. So I really appreciate that. So I don't know. I feel like the reason why Duterte, du, du, du Duarte, du, 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 da, 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 ever became president of the Philippines, and the reason Le Pen, Le, Le Pen and uh, the Democratic right-wing folly or whatever the... All I can think of is now is uh, did not finish uh, DFL, DNF. I forget what the, what the oppositional party is uh, when it comes to uh, Germany. And then France, right? And then you have, where else? Where else is going to probably fall? Poland is going to fall to right-wing extremism. And not even right-wing extremism. I'm translating from my three liberal listeners. What I mean all the time is nationalism and populism. I don't know if it's populist nationalism or nationalist populism or what it's called, but it, it is whatever Trump is, right? It is... Um, and the more that the boot of climate change is pressed on the neck of the people, the more anybody who's ever been pro climate change is going to be out of office. Um, anybody who's totally into ESG and and to be honest, um, DEI, I believe that in the same way that um, Disney is theoretically being crushed and things like R.O.B.Y. and Robin Hood has a popularity on Rotten Tomatoes of 1.3 out of 10, or is it 1.3%? I don't know. Um, I haven't been in Rotten Tomatoes world in forever. And, you know, there's just the people are, I mean, they say it's like nerds or fanboys or whatever. But yeah, 80% of every public is filled with people. And 20% of every public of every public or every public of every populace is filled with um, robots. And at the end of the day, the robots, and by robots, I mean, you know, people like me, neurodivergent, uh, people who are not um, bell curve middle, people who, I, I just call them robots. People, the, the, the robots can always get really close to short power under people, but people always outnumber robots. And to give it clear understanding Only robots go to Harvard. Only robots go to Yale. Only robots go to Princeton. Only robots go to Stanford. Some people go to Berkeley. Some people go to University of Chicago. Um, Only robots go to... um, Actually, Dartmouth has people. Brown has people. Columbia has people. NYU has people. Um, Oxford and Cambridge has robots. Uh, GW has lots of people. Um, Georgetown is people, um, Maryland is people, George Mason is people. Um, so you get what I mean. People who, people who make plans by saying things like only I, the world has chosen me because only I can make the hard choices. I'm the only person who can make this hard choice. I am the only person who is willing to kill a thousand to save one or save one to save a thousand or... Um, raise all Palestinians to bring peace to the Middle East or um, uh, um, create a war in Ukraine because of how pissed Russia was that we uh, grew into their property or their their property. Very old stuff. Those robots should open a book once in a while and figure out the minefield that they're walking into trauma-wise. And you know what? They all do. And they realize that they can reactivate bloodlands Holomador, Holomadir, Halalalalala, Mama Lama, Lama Deer, and World War II and World War I and probably earlier wars. 
and famines and death. And it was less than a hundred years ago when Polish and Ukrainian people were eating each other. There was rampant capitalism uh, about a hundred years ago, 10 years from now. So all that fun. Pogroms, culture revolutions, um, any, any new culture feels the need to go ahead and raise and destroy all the former robots. That's why Pol Pot uh, killed everybody who wore glasses, because only robots wear glasses. Anybody a jock would call a nerd is, technically speaking, a robot. Um, anyway, so my point is, as I riff and raff and rant, my point is, all y'all, is that all y'all are encouraging instead of discouraging. It probably worked to make Trump look like a buffoon, but even if you make him seem like a rapist or a raper or a sexually assaulter, um, the NLP consequence that consequence of that is that he's a, he's a bad boy, he's a marauder, he takes what he wants, he doesn't let anything like a no get in his way, and people fear and respect that, right? All of us have these stories in our head about the opportunity not taken, the shot that we didn't take, the the saying which is um, you miss a hundred percent of you mi- you miss a hundred percent of the of the swings that you don't take. And uh, at the end of the day, everybody believes because there's so much lies churning in the media sphere. Nobody believes these any these these things. They believe that Trump got a BJ and got banged in a changing room in Bloomies, and he believes that he fucked hookers and he fucked porn stars and that he's banged women all over the place, doesn't care. He's had a number of wives, probably going to have another wife before he dies. He openly uh, sexually objectifies his hot daughter. He does this, he does that. He doesn't give any fucks. He has fuck you money times a thousand. He has fuck you attitude. He is shameless. He's fearless. He's um, he's dangerous. Uh, you know for a fact that he has um, uh, cleaners. Uh, people he has people who do wet work work for him. And you know that uh, in his real estate world, he's had people you know beat the shit up and kicked out of town. You know that the guy is secret dangerous. So by just encouraging this behavior, this is oh okay. Now, I lived in D.C. pretty much off and on since 1988, and there was a, a uh, prison here called Lorton? Lorton Prison? Lorton? Anyway, I think it's Lorton. Anyway, it was, it was sort of like community college. It was like middle school, high school, community college, and grad school for a lot of uh, inner city youths who ended up going there and learning how to be a real bona fide professional criminal. Uh, The way the system worked is drug dealing and um, kidnapping and um, uh, carjacking and mugging, especially mugging, are all done by the babies, right? Like, I have six friends in D.C., not me, knock on wood. Six friends of mine have been held up at gunpoint by 12-year-olds who had little shitty revolvers and got all their money and didn't shoot them, luckily. None of my friends would ever play heroes. None of my friends are armed. I think most of my friends might have uh, had fun at a range, but have not put any, like, serious range time in. And probably none of them, except maybe Andrew, because I think he's a secret spy. And maybe Oliver, because he's the guy who finally got me into guns again uh, at his bachelor party, which which they had uh, at a gun range outside of Philly. Um... I don't know if they would know how to um, break down, field strip, and uh, put together uh, an AR-15 or a uh, Glock 19 or even uh, any type of uh, pistol. Certainly not a Ruger uh, of any sort. So that's what happens. What you do when you when you're selling drugs in the street, or you're mugging, or you're carjacking, or whatever, you always make sure you always make sure that that the kids are are um, are underage, right? So when they get uh, arrested, they probably are not going to go to jail. And if they go to jail, it'll be a juvie, unless there's a killing, in which case they might go to proper jail, proper prison. But they're still super young, and um, 
there can always be plausible deniability, right? Like if you have the young, and besides, that is their, that is the price they have to pay to get into the gang, right? If you take time away from your elder and you do the crime and you make the money and you steal the car and you get the catalytic converter or you hold up uh, Amy and Min and steal their money and credit cards or you um, are the guy who uh, holds holds the drugs uh, so that if you get nabbed, uh, you're under 16, under 18, and you're probably not going to do a lot of time. This is back in the day when street crime and drug crime and any crime uh, would be prosecuted. Now it's catch and release. That's different. But Lorton, Lorton, fuck. Anyway, it's closed now. But what would happen is kids would be going in, you know, 18, 19, 20. They might do a two, three, five, 10, 20 year, year stint. Uh, they'd make a lot of criminal acquaintances in there. Everybody would be near enough. Families would be able to uh, go out there. <clears throat> um, they would rent, you know, buses and stuff and families and kids and wives and mistresses, uh, associated people would go out there and be able to visit. Um, it's like, you know, going to visit someone at the local school. Like, like if, uh, if you live in the DC area and you're, uh, anyway, I'll call you, I'll talk to you soon. All right, I'm back. This is going to be kind of the close, but, uh, when you're at a party, I was in a fraternity, uh, when you're at a party and there's a bunch of people around, this is also down to, if you will, down to voting, right? Uh, what you believe in your heart and what you do in the quiet and the darkness of your voting booth. I guess they're not dark. It's not like a crypt. But like what you do in the privacy of the voting booth is different than how you portray in the world. No boy, no girl, no, no buddy wants to seem like too much of a slut, right? So you're always going to be like, I'm a good Catholic girl. I'm a good Catholic boy. <clears throat> but when you're at a party and everybody in the party is being like, oh man, that mic is a dog. That mic is a dog. That guy goes through him like toilet paper. Yo, crazy. Or like, that's what happened to me at UEA Norwich. Like I was there super early before everybody else because they wanted to kind of teach the year abroad students. They wanted to have a couple parties, a little bit getting to know before the regular students came in. And um, English men are extreme. Well, back in 1990, English men were extremely protective of their English roses. They, instead of going out and having sex in college, uh, they would idealize having sex in college or they would idealize and protect um, at the end of a rapier, at the end of a, of, of a glove to the face, right? And I was there from America and I was looking pretty good. I was a little bit beefy for a, for a, a light Brit, but I was literally in the first... So I was third year, so I, w I had the advantage of being 20. And all these other, most of these other students uh, first, were first year students and they were 17, 18 or 19. And uh, I got there super early and I was the first guy to have sex on campus. And everybody found out, everybody found out. And um, it made me really interesting in, in, over the course of my year to the point where it completely screwed me towards the end of the year when I fell madly in love with a girl named uh, Elizabeth Humphreys, Liz Humphreys, because she had heard my reputation and it, it shit all over my ability to be in love with her, which I really wanted to be. But in a small little, you know, in, in that world, the fact that I was a supposedly, you know, a playa and supposedly came into town and like went to town and all this other stuff. Um, and if you know me, you know, I'm not a player, you know, I'm not, uh, in any way. Oh my God, I'm not remotely a Lothario, but, uh, but you know, um, uh, in the land of the blind, the one eyed man is King. So, <clears throat> and, uh, maybe British boys are still that way. They're very shy. I think, I think British women have to do all the work in order to continue the species moving forward. Um, so anyway, at a bar or at a fraternity party, when everybody is talking about how awful this guy is and how um, the sex was awesome, he has a huge penis, but what an asshole, totally not boyfriend material. I don't have a big penis and I'm not an asshole. 
so disappointing, right? Like I'm six foot three, like lean. I'm about 220 pounds. And now there's no big dick energy here. Anyway, so now I have to go ahead and label this. Since I said fuckity fuck fuck earlier, I have to label this as explicit. So it's my fault, you bastards. So as all these people are saying all these things, these terrible things about what an asshole Mike is, what a dick, how selfish, selfish lover, big dick, um, completely pushed me around. How dare that guy? He choked me. He tied me up. He took me from behind. He, I, you know, I don't do butt stuff, but Mike made me do butt stuff. Like all this stuff. And everybody's like, oh my God, he's so terrible. Oh my God, he's the worst. Oh my God, he completely sucks. You know, next day, sliding into the DM, slide into the DM, slide into the DMs. Even if it's only for a roll in the hay, roll in the hay, roll in the hay, roll in the hay, roll in the hay. Can you tell me what movie that's from? Anyway, so I want you to know that every time you try to um, other or, and you know, this might be your plan. Your plan might be to make um, um, Bibi Netanyahu into the biggest stud ever. Um, You're certainly making Zelensky into being a pretty big stud. But the fact that you're calling four foot six uh, Vladimir Putin a dangerous guy, a ruthless, dangerous guy. Man, all the girls want to bang that boy. That girl's got that boy, uh, Voldemort Putin, Vladimir Putin, Vlad the Impaler. That guy's got big dick energy, man. You can't kill him. He's unkillable. Man, he's he's like uh, Castro. Fidel Castro's got big dick energy. Oh, man, you know, like Che Guevara is sexy AF, but you know Castro is is a is a kinky fucking fuck. So anyway, I need to tell ChatGP to let you know that I become a foul mouth monster. Uh, but yeah, the uh, I have a friend. Uh, I'll call him O. Like uh, once it got out in our friend community that he had, uh, he was quite well endowed. Everybody took a stab at that. Like, like technically speaking, he didn't even have to raise a hand. All of my buddy's wife's friends, like, jumped his bones. And I don't feel like there was a desire to make him their husband, make him their husband. I feel like there was a desire to get a piece of that. And when it comes to someone like Donald Trump or JFK Jr., um, uh, or if you will, I don't know who else, the only two people who have big dick energy, the only three people who have big dick energy, um, the five people, the six, same thing with Russell Brand. Even my freaking politically correct lefty friend Mark said to me, ah, no way any of those chicks got raped by Russell Brand. All those women knew exactly what he was about. They just got regret, regret raped or regret assaulted. Like, I made a bad decision. I don't want to be associated with having done that. It's like, it's like, um, back 20 years ago or even now, like it is extremely poor form. It's extremely poor form to out someone as gay, right? Outing someone as gay has been the worst thing in the world. It's your own journey when you come out as gay or queer or bi or gender non-binary or lesbian or whatever. It's your story to tell and it's your job if you want to tell people. Entire families have known since the child was five years old and it's just proper form not to call your child a fag. Um, usually good families allow the coming out day to happen organically and then act a little surprised and then maybe six down, six months down the road say, well, we kind of knew from when you were five years old. Same thing. Like it's really poor form to out someone as a slag, a slut, uh, 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 you know, it's, it's, un, it's untoward to out someone's body count thousand people 500 people 5,000 people a hundred people over 30 people over 50 people over 10 people it completely is untoward so if you end up in um in the dead soldiers in the empty bottles the empty vessels that uh that russell brand cast away you're gonna be salty probably um he probably took liberties 
that's the thing. Like the thing that I'm not cool with in terms of modern dating is I don't at, at 300 pounds and five and six foot three. I am not good with the simulated danger, the simulated I trust you rape fans, fantasy, the simulated choking out any of that stuff. Do a little hair. I'll do a little bit of hair pulling. I'll do a little bit of spanking. But aside from that, like I do not in any way want to trust someone's life with simulated mayhem just because it turns someone on. Um, my buddy Mark, on the other hand, uh, at five foot ten and one hundred fifty pounds, can completely go wild, and he's generally the same height and weight of anybody he's with. So it's sort of more of an equal fight, um, and they can, you know, you can go to town. Uh, if you're in the same weight class, right? Like it's like um, a 300 pound wrestler doesn't go uh, on the mat with a 120 pound wrestler, not even in sparring. It's even dangerous in sparring. Uh, so yeah, so like that. So back to that, like if you hear that someone's willing to do stuff that you've always wanted to try, but you don't want to be a sl- you don't want to feel like you're a slut in front of your boyfriend or a guy that you know that you might want to marry down the road when you get out of everything out of your system or whatever, like body count has destroyed many a relationship. I don't think my relationship with Michelle survived the body count conversation. Um, yeah, the two conversations that have pretty much killed relationships before either of us have known it in general, my relationships have been the body count conversation and the penis size conversation. Once I get an idea that you've had it much bigger dicks, um, even with Aphantasia and Nestam, that seems to be the only thing that my mind can remember anytime I look at you. So rule number one of keeping and having a boyfriend, uh, always tell him, oh my God, I've never been so full. I've never, I can barely take it. Uh, let's slow down. I need some, a little while to get used to you. I'll breathe into it, baby. Maybe we need, need more lube, things like that. So Finding out that I have a comparatively small penis compared to the huge dicks kills a relationship and finding out, uh, surprisingly, if I know going in, you know, caveat emptor, but uh, if I find out later that my sweet little princess is a thousand deep um, and I include any kind of like oral or whatever, like in that number, then I have a hard time getting that idea out of my head. Let me remind you, even though I sound like a, a asshole, I'm not dating currently. I have no desire to date, and I probably, probably haven't really dated since a while, a long while, too long. But like I was telling a girl I was just talking to when I cut the uh, recorder just a second ago, um, I need a girlfriend like uh, Fish Needs a Bicycle. On the other hand, she did say I look really svelte and, 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 and like I've lost a lot of weight, so I will marry her if she asks me. Um, what else? Yeah. So long story short, uh, people vote the way people date. They tell you that they want Joe Biden, but they actually really just want Donald Trump because they do not want to actually have people knock on their door, even though they have a sign out front that says all, all oppressed are welcome here. They don't want actually everybody, even the most generous, um, uh, profile image of the day, whether it's a black profile or a Ukrainian flag profile or an Israeli flag pro- profile or a Palestinian flag profile or Asian and Pacific Islander profile, whatever. The people who do profile a day, um, if you scratch them, what comes out isn't blood but NIMBY, not in my backyard. Uh, the offer of sanctuary cities were contingent to based on the fact that none of those um, uh, cities were anywhere near to the border where the border crisis was happening. And the hundreds of thousands of people that have been flown and bussed to those cities have very quickly overwhelmed them and are going to very quickly result. And even even the street criminals are going to be like, back off, yo. So who's going to know? Who's going to see? I can't even tell what's going to happen in uh, November 2024. I have no prediction. Uh, I just know that every time you throw another indictment at Trump, it just makes him stronger. It's like one of those superhero, super villains who, um, absorb your superpowers every time you try to attack them. And then they come at you with your own superpower. The newest superpowers that Trump has, uh, gotten have been, 
uh, um, precedence, like a P-R-E-C-E-D-E-N-T-S, precedence. In other words, every time someone comes after him and it goes through and a precedent was set, like this RICO law stuff that happened in Atlanta, one week later, um, Antifa people are being uh, accused based on these RICO um, laws that Trump has shown can be used for something besides uh, conspiracy or organized crime. So the beautiful thing is that every time, oh, what is that? It's like it's like I'm watching uh, Buffy season five and season six right now. That chip that they put in Spike's head. Every time he attacks a human, a searing pain goes into his head. Every time you attack Trump, a searing pain goes back to the Democrats. Every time you attack uh, the 80 percent, a searing pain goes back to the robots. It's like that thing of Asimov, right? Do no harm towards humans. 80% of the people are humans. 20% are robots. Every time robots try to hurt people, try to hurt humans, they get a searing uh, pain in their head. And I don't know when they'll realize that they need to leave well enough alone because they keep on picking at it. And if everybody believes that the country has Palestinian terror cells, Islamic, and they see Biden build walls like Trump said, and then... uh limit flights like if they literally see biden do a, a a muslim ban like trump did and they start seeing biden be trump then they're gonna vote for trump because they might as well have a younger biden anyway they might as well have a ballsier trump um so this is just gonna you, you guys are right you guys really need to put him in jail or have him take him out or something because um everybody's going to vote for him. Uh, progressive populists are going to vote for him because they see the way that the establishment is treating um, uh, anti-Israel, pro-Palestinian um, um, activism. They're seeing that it's not exclu the, the, the uh, canceling, the assault on free speech and the censorship isn't only being levied at the thing that they hate, which is right-wing extremism, Christo-fascism. It's actually being levied at all enemy of the Democratic Party, the establishment neolib Democratic Party. So if you're to the left of that and to the left of that, there's more humans, but they're they're uh, um, um, comment dit, uh, progressive populist. So the establishment middle and I'm including neocons in that, like uh, Nikki Haley and uh, and Pence and uh, um all the other war pigs that are calling uh, Vivek Ramaswamy uh, crazy because he doesn't support unfettered access. I'm including uh, Lady Mitch McConnell. I'm including all those Lady Mitch McConnells that are pro-war, uh, that are war pigs, that are unfettered access, uh, that are any type of establishment people who are either... Um, um, uh, from the family tree of John McCain, or from the family fee, from the family tree of Dick Cheney, or the family tree of of Mika Mika Mika, uh, you know, M Morning Joe Mika. Those are like the three uh, Abrahamic trunks of what neo lib neo con. The neo con trunk is like Brzezinski. So Mika Brzezinski is the neo lib definer. Her dad is the definer of what neolib um, uh, vision and strategy are. Uh, him and that 100-year-old, 99-year-old um, aide to uh, to everybody, uh, forgot his name. And, uh, of course, John McCain is the patron saint of the neocons. And and uh, along with uh, John McCain, uh, John Mc... Uh, anyway, so you get my point. To the left, there are socialist progressive populace which are people and humans and to the right there are nationalistic nationalist populace which are humans and in the middle holding all the power are people who more and more don't seem like they have our own best interests in mind looting stores leaving desert um food deserts 117th street target being closed market street Walmart's being closed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We're going back in time. 
inner city black communities are losing their access to uh, cheap, affordable uh, merchandise. This might be the result of unrestrained, unindicted, uncharged, Im- unimprisoned, bailed criminals, homeless people, homeless encampments, outdoor, shame free, marijuana, mess, and uh, what's that favorite one? Uh, the one that everybody's dying from now. Uh, the one that I have Narcan for, you know, <clears throat> anybody, you know, out of sight, out of mind, man, you bring it into sight. That's why I think it's intentional. I think that, uh, I think that, uh, progressive leftists who support, um, extreme social justice are feeling like at some point their enclaves are going to be defiled by criminality, home invasions, and, and it'll be in their backyard. So I think passive aggressively, they are hyping up the enemy in such a way that's going to make humans want to want to vote for Trump or someone like him and uh, driving them to people like Tucker Carlson, driving them to people like uh, Tulsi Gabbard, driving them to people like I hate to say it, like um, 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 Andrew Tate, driving them to people like um, uh, Tim Pool and uh, all the other guys. So. On that note, this is extremely long. I love you. I'll talk to you soon. Mahalo. Goodbye. And tomorrow's episode will be season six, episode six. Anyway, aloha, mahalo. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.